Okay, so I think that I started it, so I think we should start now. Um, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all California students, sponsored by College to Career Fairs and Strife Scan. Um, thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at college to career fairs connect.org. Um, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, college to career fairs connect.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Alrighty, thank you, Veronica. Can everyone see my screen? Let's see. You are all set. Perfect, thank you, Brianna, appreciate it. Okay, we'll just give a couple more seconds for Ava to log in and then we'll get started, alrighty? Alrighty. Welcome everybody. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. My name is Alejandro Alejandre. I'm the regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado University located in Gunnison, Colorado. This is Discover Western Your Destination Education. I am very, very excited to kind of talk about Western a little bit more kind of in terms of what we offer for post um, education later on and kind of just going over what we offer in Gunnison, in Western in terms of academics. Uh, kind of going over the tuition and cost, athletics, and all that stuff, and also talking about the Gunnison Valley. Um, I do have uh, Brianna Clark, who is also a regional director, will be joining us today. She will be moderating the, the chat. So if you have any questions along the way, um, yeah, there she, uh, there she is. Um, if you have any questions along the way, definitely drop those in the chat um, at the bottom of the screen. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Zoom now, but uh, if now we'll get those, uh, we'll get to those questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, a quick introduction. Um, like I said, my name is Alejandro Alejandre. Yes, I is a little difference. No, I do not have two first names or last names. I go by Alex though, nice and simple. I'm originally from La Parca, Jalisco, Mexico, Southern part of Mexico. Si, si hablo español. I do speak Spanish. But I grew up in a small little town in the Western Slope in Colorado, Cedar Ridge. And uh, I'm a first generation college graduate. I'm also the second of my family graduate from Western. Graduated from Western in 2018 with a degree in psychology. And then I got hired on by Western as a missions counselor um, two days after I walked. So I was one of the lucky ones that got to stick around the Gunson Valley for a little bit longer. Now I'll be frank with you all. I was not planning on attending Western. It was not my radar. I mean, like I said, Cedar Ridge was it's a small little town in the middle of nowhere. So my plan was just to get out, go to the city, go to the big, University and honestly experienced something completely different than my sister was back time at Western. Long story short though, family, you know, talked a little common sense to me, you can say, and you know, they, they said that since we're new to the country, it'll be an easier transition if I went to a small school like Western first, you know, kind of get my feet in the water before transferring to a big institution. And I did, and I'm glad I did. Uh, you know, my first semester at Western, I started getting involved with a lot of clubs and organizations. I got involved with the Multicultural Center. I got involved with the Orientation Department. Um, Steering Government Association, uh, Psychology, the Psychology Club, Omer Conducted Kappa, which is an honors program on campus, and also uh, I, I ran a leadership program on the Gunson Middle School. Leadership program that my little sister, who's going to be the third one in my family, graduated from Western, is planning on taking over. It's, I got involved with like clubs and organizations on, on and off campus, and it's, that's just something that's very easy to do at Western, something I would strongly recommend. Uh, but I would say the two things that came me from transferring was one, 
the amount of support that I received from the staff and faculty. That is honestly something that really surprised me when I arrived at Western, something that helped me grow all those four years. And also affordability is huge, was one of the big factors that kept me from transferring. I mean, I come from a large family. I'm the fifth out of seven. So if I wanted to study, it was totally up to me. So, I mean, with the amount of scholarships on campus and with low tuitions, I was able to graduate with little to no debt. Uh, when I say little to no debt, I graduated with $3,750. Uh, and student debt, something I already paid off now. Yes, that, that was how much I graduated with. Now I am in state, so it's definitely, uh, the price tag definitely is different from out of state, but I would say uh, for being out of state school, we are, I would say pretty affordable as well. And I would definitely touch on the tuition and cost there and the presentation. Now a little bit about Western. So Western Colorado University is located at the hearts of the Rocky Mountain in Gunnison, Colorado. Now, when I tell the students where Western is, I tell them that, you know, it's three and a half hours away southwest of Denver. Now, Gunnison, it's a small little town about with about 9,000 people. Now, that's including Western student enrollment at 3,000 students. So we got roughly about 26 undergraduate students, 400, 400, 400 graduate students. Now, we are projected to grow each year. Now, even though it's a little town, there's a lot of things to do and there's something for everybody. I mean, we have Crested View, which is 30 minutes north of town. Crested View is kind of your typical mountain town that I would say it hasn't been fully taken by tourists, but it is kind of a little tourist attraction. There's a lot of gift shops, restaurants. It does have the closest theater to us, but there's a bus that runs from Gunson to Crested View every day, every hour, all year round, and that's here for everybody. But Crested View, you can ski and snowboard which is a big attraction for a lot of students at Western. Uh, students do get discounts to skins no by Mount Crested View. Uh, you can also mountain bike, you can hike, uh, you can fly fish, and also the colors in the, in the fall. Oh, golly, it, it is beautiful, peaceful, honestly. Uh, we have Harmons, which is five miles south of town. Harmons is the largest outdoor recreation in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres, and students, that's what a lot of your, your outdoor activities will, activities will take place. So like mountain biking, hiking, rock climbing, there's over 150 camping sites. If you have a dirt bike, you can ride there. There's a shooting range. You can also do what I used to do and kind of drive in the middle of the night and get lost because it's just so big. A lot of the clubs will host a lot of campfires and bonfires there as well. And honestly, Rollers Pursuits, they have the best bonfires in any club on campus, I would say. Now, I never got invited to one of them, but honestly, I, was, I saw them far away. And yes, I was very jealous that I did not get invited to one of them. So if you ever go to Common Western, I would definitely recommend getting involved with them. And then I will definitely talk about them later on. And then we also have Blue Mesa, which Blue Mesa is 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado. It's over 20 miles long. And students, that's where your water activities will take place. Now, it's nothing like the ocean, but it is as close as we're going to get in, in the Rocky Mountains. So, like I said, it's 20 miles long, and that's where your water activities will take place. So, paddle boarding, boating, fishing, ice fishing. Or you can have a nice carne asada on a hot Saturday evening. And that's why we're going to hot Saturday evening, especially during the summer. It hits the spot. hits the spot, folks. Another thing, we do have Monarch Mountain, which is 42 minutes east of town. Uh, that's another famous ski resort that we have on campus. So you're in between two famous ski resorts. We also have Keller Reservoir, which is really nice. Fishing grounds if you're big into fishing. And that's 42, about 42 minutes northeast of town. Uh, and then we also have Signal Peak, which is right on campus about the football stadium. And that's just over 8,000 acres of, you know, trails that you can bike, hike, or mountain bike. A lot of things to do out there. So you, in a way, you can say we're surrounded by the the, what you can say the Colorado Adventure area. So, so a little about the location. Let's see, now we are surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public land. So our backyard is our is our classroom. It's like an outdoor laboratory that we have for the students. So it makes it very easy for students who are studying wildlife, wildlife biology, environmental sustainability, or just really like that recreation outdoor. Um, area that it's it's just a really neat area for for them just like i said we're surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public land so it, it just makes it really easy for those for those majors um and yeah our average class sizes is 17. now 
Our largest classroom on campus is around 66 students now. We are a four-year public liberal arts institution, so meaning as an incoming student, two years of general education courses is required. Now, those general education courses do tend to be a little larger, about 20 students. Uh, but once you move up to your upper division courses, those classes tend to get smaller. So, for example, my capstone class was about nine students, 10 students. Uh, my general education class, like the general psychology or math or English, those were about 20, 25 students. But like I said, you will never be stuck in a, in a classroom with more than uh, 66 students. Now, one of the questions that I hope you students are asking yourself right now or that you're pondering about is, what type of student are you? What type of learner are you? Do you learn best in a lecture hall with four or 500 other people or in a small classroom? Like I said, at Western, you will get to connect with your professors. You'll see them on campus, you'll see them, you'll see them in the community, and depending on your relationship with them, you'll probably end up having coffee or dinner with one of them. Um, I know I've went a lot of coffee dates or a lot, had dinner with a lot of my professors, a lot of my, my peers did as well, and that's something I would strongly recommend, especially when it comes down to internships or finding jobs, they're the ones who are well connected and they will be able to help you the most. Now we offer over a hundred areas of studies. Uh, some of the popular majors on campus, uh, like I said, since we're surrounded by 1.7 million acres of public land, so the outdoor um, programs are well, uh, was, I would say are more of our popular majors. Uh, by environmental sensibility, recreation, outdoor education, biology, business, I would say those would be our top five most popular majors on campus. Uh, just kind of going into each of those programs, like I said, business is probably the biggest program on campus. It's the most, uh, I would say, the biggest one, the most popular majors on campus. Um, they have a, they, pro, they have programs like resource management, professional land and resource management, accounting, uh, finance. Uh, they, I would say, have also one of the most funding, uh, the most merit scholarship or most amount of scholarship um, than any other program on campus. They have over $120,000 $120, on merit scholarship money and that keeps going each year. So they offer a lot of financial opportunities for students. Uh, they also partner up with the number one study abroad uh, school, Arlixton. So as soon as uh, do, which is number one uh, study abroad school uh, in, in the nation. Um, but one of the things I do want to highlight about the business department is that they have the Office of, the Office of Career Success. So it's kind of like similar to the Office of Career Services, which is offered to a lot of the, all the students at Western, but the Office of Career Success is just for students in the business department since they're probably funded. Now, I have a lot of students, uh, a lot of my friends who major in business, and they will use that office a lot. So they really help them polish the resume, cover letter. They were again flown to internships, job interviews in Texas, Washington, Arizona. And honestly, they had a job lined up before they went into their spring semester of their senior year. So I would say, like I said, the, the business department, just overall a quick overview. They have their biggest program on campus. They have their most funding. Like I said, I would say they have one of the most resources on campus to really help students find internship jobs afterwards as well. So we also have uh, exercise sports science, which we have a high altitude performance lab, which is a cutting edge exercise research uh, for a lot of the students who are doing the high altitude exercise physiology, the master's program, which we have a three plus two in exercise sports science with the high altitude as well as physiology. But students do get used to the art equipment to conduct studies. Most of those studies is just kind of seeing how elevation affects performance. They will conduct a lot of the studies with a lot of the athletes on campus, with a lot of the students on campus, with the community um, members. Um, and most of those studies uh, do involve a lot of the graduate students as well as the undergrad students. So a lot of the undergrad students actually get the opportunity to work with a lot of the graduate students and also kind of use say the art equipment, which is really neat, especially for being an undergrad students. Not many uh, schools will let their undergrad students work with graduate students and also just use say the art equipment. So that's a really neat opportunity that we use that we have on our campus. Also, we do believe that um, 
the best way to learn about life is just to study it up close. And like I said, since we're surrounded by so much beauty in the in the in the in the, in the Gunson Valley, it's just really easy to do that. Uh, a lot of the classroom will be outdoors, um, and it's more um, I would say hands-on experience, which is really neat. Like I said, a lot of the classes, especially for wild bi wildlife biology, recreation, outdoor education, or environmental accessibility, most of those classes will be outdoors. So it's not just being in the classroom, but also outside since our backyard is a laboratory. Both of both, best of both worlds, sorry about that. So two years ago, we have a very generous, generous donation from Paul Rady for $80 million. And that's to build our Rady School of Computer Science and Mechanical Engineering. This is a partnership we have with the University of Colorado, with CU Boulder, where they're renowned for their applied sciences and also engineering. So how this partnership works is the students, so as the Western students, and they'll, they'll be competing their first two years at Western, Later on, they will transfer over to CU, but they will complete that mechanical engineering computer science program on our campus. They'll be on campus all those four years. Now, that degree will become from CU, and they will also be taught from CU professors that third and fourth year, which is really neat that we're offering a CU education at lower cost. It's really neat, like I said, that we're offering that, that uh, education. The Ready Paul, the Ready School of Computer Science and Mechanical Engineering is gonna be done in spring 2021. You can definitely check the progress on our website. There's also a, a page on our website that will have more information about it. If you have any questions or anything, definitely recommend reaching out to Laura Beck, Lauren Fisher or Hannah Montoya. I just have more information about that. But like I said, it's a really neat program that we do offer at Western. So you have computer science and mechanical engineering. And one other thing, we do offer a computer science program. So you definitely have two different pathways of getting that degree. Um, but like I said, if you want more information, I'll definitely recommend looking on our website. Now, we also have over seven three plus two programs. Those are accelerated programs where you receive your bachelor's and your master's in five years. Now, students, you're probably not thinking about a master's program at the moment, but I will strongly, strongly recommend looking at them. Why? Because it's going to save you time and it's also going to save you money. Like I said, your fourth year, your financial way will apply to your first year, your master's. So like I said, even if you're not thinking about it, I would strongly recommend looking at those right now. Uh, it's gonna save you money and time. Um, like I said, it's, uh, if you want any more information about that, uh, please look on our website and they'll have more. But like I said, my little sister who is a sophomore right now is looking at a three plus two in, in education. So that's definitely gonna help, help her a lot, but we are, Every year we're constantly growing this list, and that's honestly something I wish would, that was around when I was when I was in at Western. So now our priority, our first priority, I would say at Western is student success. That's the main thing. I mean, we're trying to help you as much as possible to just uh, as much as possible for the next steps. So we do offer a lot of resources. We have a Math and Ryan Center, which. If you're not good with math and writing, we offer those two uh, resources and they're free for the students to go for additional help. Uh, they do accommodate to a lot of the students' hours. And um, like I said, they're, they, uh, they're on campus. Uh, we also offer disability services, which works with a lot of the, which will work with the coaches, will work with the professors, the students to come make sure they have everything they need to excel in the classroom. Now, a couple of things I do want to highlight is the academic advisor. So when you do decide to commit to Western, you will be assigned an academic advisor in your field. That advisor will guide you through your, four year, your time at Western. You'll meet with them once or twice or as needed per semester to go over internship opportunities and class scheduling. Like at bigger institutions, Western is not going to send you a registration code for your tuition for your own classes. You actually get to sit down with your academic advisor one-on-one -on -one and plan your next semester and next year ahead which is really helpful. It will help you plan your next semester and kind of also with the next step of if you're especially if you're going to grad school, um, they will help you look at those courses that will help you later on be successful as well in grad school. And also I would recommend getting in their, in their good side uh, because they, uh, when it comes down to uh, find internships or jobs and you need letter recommendations, they will be the ones who will be able to help you the most. The Office of Career Services, I would say they do an exceptional job of really helping students be prepared for an internship or a job after they move away from Western. They host a lot of workshops to really help students polish their resume, cover letter. They host a lot of um, 
job internship fairs each semester. Uh, like I say, Craig Beebe will work one-on-one -on -one with uh, the students, kind of make sure that their uh, application is top-notch and then they're ready for for their interview or for, for grad school or whatever they might be applying for. And the last office I do want to highlight is the EPIC Mentors. The EPIC stands for Experience, Peers, Initiation, Connection. The EPIC Mentors is a group of upperclassmen students at Western who are dedicated to helping students, incoming and transfer students for their first year at Western. So they will be guiding you, kind of making sure everything's fine, if you need any resources, whatever it might be, they're there for you. So they're there to just really guide you all those four years. I will say the EPIC Mentors are an exceptional group of students who are well connected on campus with athletic clubs organizations and also in the community and they have a role well, well rounded knowledge of the campus so like i said they're going to be like they're going to be your first uh friends that you will make on campus and like i said they're they're, they're there for you for sure so so one of the big cause when one of the big things when you're looking at schools is affordability Especially now with higher ed becoming very expensive, you definitely gotta spend time with the school you're attending. So one of the things that we at Western Focus is low cost, high value. So even as a small public school, we have won many awards. How do we do it? Well, we have a singular focus on teaching excellence. So we, Western's only purpose is to offer its students the best education possible. Western is not a teaching school, not, sorry, Western is not a, is not just a teaching school, it's, it's not, sorry, Western is a teaching school, not a research institution. So our professors are there because they want to teach. Even our basic freshman courses or general education, like I said, those are taught by professors, not by teaching assistants or by part-timers. Those professors are really there for the students. And yes, they do a little bit of research on the side, but their main priority is you students. They will host a lot of office hours throughout the week, so you can talk one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you're struggling with a course that maybe it's not part of your major or your minor, it's maybe one of those general education courses and you're struggling with it, you can definitely go to their office hours to get additional help from them. Now, like I said, even um, and one of the things that I also hope you're thinking of is, are you okay about being taught by a teaching assistant or by a part-timer? Like I said, 71% of the professors at Western have tournament degrees and 84% of the classes are taught by full-time faculty. So you, all your classes are going to be taught by someone who can sense an expert in the field. So that's, I, I hope that's one of the things that you guys are also thinking of is, are you okay with being taught by a teaching assistant by a part-timer? Maybe by one of your peers? Little, little couple of food for thoughts for sure, so. So now let's get down to the, the cost. Overall cost for out of state is going to be tuition for out of state is going to be over eighteen thousand dollars. Now that's going to be a little under. It's going to be under the national average, which is over twenty two thousand over twenty two thousand dollars. Eighty percent of the students receive aid, and eighty and one hundred percent of the students are considered for merit aid. So yeah, the tuition is over eighteen thousand dollars, but I will say you're not going to pay that all out of pocket. There's definitely going to be scholarship opportunities. And one of those scholarship opportunities that we have is the marriage scholarships. Now, marriage scholarships are upon acceptance. They will go off your test scores and GPA. Now, for fall 2021, we are going test optional. They're, they're just going to be going off your GPA. But those scholarships range from eight to $10,000. Now, that's going to take a big chunk of your tuition. Now, like I said, that's a renewal scholarship that you'll be awarded all four years at Western, as long as you maintain the GPA of 3.75. Now a couple of things, students. We super score, so we will take the highest per sub test. If you if you take later on, if you decide to take the ACT or ACT multiple times, we'll take the highest per sub test. And also, we take weighted GPA. Whatever is highest, whatever is going to benefit you, we'll do. Okay. Like I said, those scholarships will range from eight to ten thousand dollars. So that's definitely going to take a big chunk of your tuition. To see what scholarship you qualify for, you can visit western.edu for slash cost. It'll have you put your information, where you're from, and then your GPA and your test scores if you're looking for 422. Like I said, for fall 2021, we're just going to be going off your GPA. To look, one more thing with uh, scholarships, to visit more of our institutional scholarships, 
go to western.edu forward slash scholarships and you'll be able to see our, all our institutional scholarships, especially in the common scholarship and program scholarships, they will all be on that page. So about Western, it's not just about the education, but also about the experiences. We do offer, we have uh, facilities that are state of the art. For example, our Mountaineer Field House, which has uh, draws top athletes and active students across the country. Now, our field house is, I would say, one of my favorite facilities, favorite uh, building on campus. I mean, it has an indoor track that's 200 meters. It's not for 100 meters, so you run four laps and you feel like you ran them out. You did not. I made that the, the silly mistake my freshman year. Um, but it has an indoors track, a foam pit, it has a multi-purpose court room where a lot of things will happen, a lot of intramural sports, a lot of students will be playing basketball or baseball. Uh, there's three rooms upstairs for a lot of things like jiu-jitsu, yoga, spin class with mailing hover happen. You'll have access to a gym and also there's a rock climbing wall that's 45 and a half feet tall. If you're scared of heights, don't worry. There is a rock, there is a bouldering wall that, that's where I usually hang out with. But we have really nice facilities. We also do compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference at the Division II level. So we have all the Division II levels for football, uh, soccer. Um, sorry, uh, we, are, we also, we have all the sports, wrestling, uh, track and field, cross country, I would say our most consistent sports. We also do have mountain sports and club sports. Um, I would say mountain sports and club sports are still committed, but they do have a fee that features for transportation, paying the coaches, paying the equipment. Um, mountain sports, I mean, I would say that's our almost our brand butter. I mean, we're surrounded, like I said, by 1.7 million acres of public land, so we're nationally recognized. Our known scheme, mountain biking, have won nationals in the years uh, in, the, in the past. Uh, we're also Division Two. We added a few sports this year to the list. We added rock climbing, uh, freestyle skiing, and snowboarding to the list. A few other sports with uh, NCAAs that we did at eSports and also uh, co-air cheerleading, uh, which they're offering have a board and room scholarship. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Now, something I will recommend everybody to join, whether you, you join, whether you attend Western or you go somewhere else, or you're an athlete, you're involved with a lot of clubs and organizations on campus, is intramural sports. It's not committal. You sign by yourself with a group of friends. You show up to the location at the event and just have fun. It's going to give you a breather from all your classes, everything that's going on in your daily life. So, like I said, we have all sorts of sports, and that's something I would strongly recommend you guys get involved. It's going to enrich your college experience, okay? Now, we also do have over 50 clubs and organizations on campus. Those are student-led clubs and students um, started clubs. So, those are things that students came to Western, and they thought that we didn't have, and they made it happen. So, now... Surrey Government Association allocates over $350,000 in all the clubs at Western. So there's always something going on, not just off campus, but also on campus. We have academic clubs. We run in conjunction with an academic program, like your psychology club, sociology club, pre-med club, your politics club. We have your passion and interest club, which is self-explanatory, I would say. Uh, we have our arts and music as well, which you don't need to be majoring in, in uh, music to be part of the assembles or anything. You can join any of those. You just have to talk to the department chair. Uh, we also have the Multicultural Center, an organization I was very involved with, an organization that my little sister and my older sister were involved with as well. But you don't need to be a certain background to join any of the clubs of the Multicultural Center. Their main objective is to promote and educate the certain body and the community on their culture. They host a live events throughout the year. In my opinion, they're probably one of the best events on campus. Why? Well, because they involve food and I love food. And the last organization that I do want to talk about is the Wilderness Pursuits. Now, Wilderness Pursuits actually include in your Wilderness and your Mountaineer Field House fee. So with, the, with that fee, you have access to the Field House. You have access to the, you'll be able to go to the games for free. And you will also be able to rank gear for Wilderness Pursuits. So let's say you want to go backpacking with a group of friends or you want to go part of, go paddleboard in a blue mesa, you don't have the equipment, you can rent small gear from Wilderness Pursuits for free, big gear, they'll give discount. Now they host different excursions throughout the year. They do mount, mountain biking at Harmons, uh, backpacking at Crested View, ice climbing in Uray, Lake City. I went to one of their fly fishing events my freshman year. They know anything about fly fishing. Honestly, I, I didn't grow up doing any outdoorsy things. So when I came to Western, my roommate uh, was huge in fly fishing and he dragged me to go with him. And for $20, I 
honestly did not just embarrass myself off of twenty dollars. I gotta try something new. They brought their instructors, they brought their equipment, and they even fed us and asked for twenty dollars. Like I said, uh, with how much beauty we're surrounded by, that's one of the organizations that I strongly recommend you seeing the second man for. So now I really need opportunity that we offer our Western, it's our mountain rescue team. Uh, which is the only collegiate mountain rescue team certified by the Mountain Rescue Association in, in America. And the students will get proper training on to go on their missions. Um, they, they will offer, yeah, they, they will give the training they need. And like I said, they're the ones who also light the W on fire, which is a tradition that we have at Western. But I had a lot of friends who were involved with mountain rescue team and they they were, you know, we were in the classroom and then they got called on the mission and then they were leaving the middle of the class and they will come back the next day with an incredible story, um, either of helping someone who was stuck in the mountain or someone that got in a car crash or something, whatever it might be. They're just there to, um, to help the, the Gunnison Valley. So, yeah. Another really neat opportunity that we offer is study abroad, which we have over 120 opportunities to take your Western experience worldwide while still getting credit towards your degree. Now there is someone in the Academic Resource Center who will help you through the, ha the whole process. Uh, but essentially you get to pay the same thing to Western, but you get to explore in a different country. Like I said, those credits will transfer over. Um, but yes, there's gonna be someone in the Academic Resource Center who will help you through the whole process, specifically a complicated one. But that is something that I, I will also recommend taking advantage of. I didn't know much about it when I was in school. Luckily I do now, and that's something that's on my sister's radar, so. So one of the general questions that we get from students, and I guess overall everybody, is what kind of students are attracted to Western? So we say, go to Western if your gear bag is bigger than your closet, your clothes closet. Like I said, a lot of the students are adventurous. They like to go to the outdoors. They have a lot of gear. There's a lot of things to do outdoors, and it's really neat. So majority of the time, a lot of the students will have more gear than they will have clothes, their clothes. Uh, now, say, you set lofty goals. Uh, they're just excuses to keep climbing. Like I said, one of the really neat things I like about Western is the personalized education. Now, also, the, say, the mentorship that you get from the professors and the staff at Western. Uh, you know, that's just another resource for you to help you achieve the goals that you have or that you want to achieve. And also your idea of a great college professor holds office hours at 14,000 feet. Honestly, it, it, can, uh, and it, can, it can be any more beautiful than that. A lot of the professors, uh, especially right now with COVID, they will host classroom outside and you will get to um, form this really neat relationship with not just with your professors, but also with your peers, which is really neat. Like I said, um, a lot of the professors will host a lot of the classroom uh, off, you know, outside, um, so you won't be stuck in the classroom the entire time. You actually get to go outside and also while learning, which is really neat. So, and then you'll rather have college pay off for you than get stuck with with paying off college. And that's one of the biggest thing, honestly, students, especially mm -hmm. nowadays when, like I said, higher is becoming expensive. You definitely want to spend uh, time of looking at those schools, not just following what your friends are doing or anything, but looking at the schools. I mean, you are looking for your next home, honestly. You gotta be happy with that home. So make sure everything you like to do, everything you enjoy doing, that school has. If you don't have, uh, if you need some help with some resources, maybe you're not good with math or writing, make sure that school has those resources for you to excel. Like I say, you don't wanna be staying, being stuck paying for college your entire life. Uh, you want to make sure you use that degree, and that's something that we really focus on at Western. Together, we will launch your future and your career. Uh, and like I said, I cannot say that more. The, the, the prof I cannot say the elaborate enough that the professors and the staff at Western, everybody at Western is really dedicated to helping you be successful uh, in life and uh, as a student as well. They're really there for you. And that's something I can't emphasize. Now, just to highlight a few uh, Western alums. Uh, the first one is Sean Markley. Now, Sean Markley used to be a truck driver for about 10 years, and then he decided to be a neurosurgeon, which is a really odd transition, but he did attend Western. And he attended Western, he received that personal education he needed, and now he's a neurosurgeon in Denver. 
The other one I do want to highlight is Katie Robinson. Katie is the network engineer for the Energy Science Network at Lawrence Berkeley uh, it, lab, National Laboratory. When she had wrapped up Western, she didn't even own a computer. She, the, the combination of practical experience gained from her work size job in IT plus her education at Western helped her, through her, through her throughout her career. And the last one, you probably know this fellow right here who is a running back for the LA Chargers, Austin Eckler. That's actually a guy that was around when I was a freshman at Western. And I mean, he overcame the odds, especially coming from a Division II school. Uh, he worked very hard. He, he had the support he needed to, uh, to reach the, the professional level in football. And like I said, he, uh, he's a running back for, for the Chargers now. So we do want to visit, and one of my, my, um, one of my recommendations to students is to apply for the schools you're interested in right now. Even the ones you know you're not interested in, make sure you apply for those schools right away. Narrow your options down the top three, top five schools, depending on how many you apply for, and visit those schools. It's crucial that you visit those schools before making a decision. Honestly, like I said, I cannot stress this enough. You are looking for your next home. You gotta be happy with that home. Now at Western, we are one of a few schools Right now in Colorado, they're offering in-person visits. Now we have regular visits that run Monday through Friday and Saturday upon request. I honestly don't recommend Saturday just because there's not an information session and there's not an optional uh, faculty appointment that we can arrange just because professors have other commitments during the weekends. But our Monday through Friday visits just start with an information session, kind of just going everything that we offer on campus, the, our surrounding area, the, the Johnson Valley, excuse me, and also um, there's a campus tour, and then if you want to meet with a coach or a professor or staff or someone on campus, we can make that arrangement after the campus tour. We also have preview days, which our preview days are on uh, for the fall on virtual, um, and they're going to be on Friday, October 23rd, and also on Saturday, on November 14th. Like I said, those are going to be virtual. The ones in the spring are still on in the air, but if you can be come for for regular visits, I would strongly recommend tuning in for those. To register for a regular visit or for preview days, uh, you can visit western.edu forward slash visit to register for your visit, um, to sign up for a visit. Now you can join the Mountaineer Nation, sorry, you can join the Mountaineer Nation today by visiting western.edu uh, to just start your destination education journey. Um, and we know that the best stories are still ahead of us, especially with all the students that are coming and everything they will achieve later on and while they're at Western, also after they, they leave from Western. And that's all I have for you folks. Now, I know we have a few minutes, about seven minutes, I want to say, uh, if you have any questions. Uh, like I said, my contact information is there, so is, so is my colleague, Brianna Clark. Um, if you have any questions or you need any clarification or anything, don't hesitate to reach out for us to us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help you. Um, but Brianna, do we have any questions or any clarifications that were? Yeah, thank you so much, Alex, for sharing all of that information. Um, at this point, we don't have any questions in the Q&A, but if any of our attendees do, just feel free to pop those into that feature. Um, otherwise, if you are all set and are ready just to go and explore Western a little bit more and some of your other college options, we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Since we have a couple of minutes, I do want to mention the, like I said, we are going to be going test optional for fall 2021. So the only things that we'll need is your application. So you can apply to the common application, which is accepted, which is accepted by universities in Colorado. You can also apply through our direct application at western.edu forward slash apply. Uh, the only things that we'll need is your transcript. That's all. We are not going to be looking at your test scores. If you have your test scores, you can definitely send those to us. Uh, but we are just going to be someone looking at your GPA. Now there is an application fee of $30. Uh, you can reach out to Brianna or I and we will be more than happy to waive the application fee for you. Uh, if you are 50 percentile students get admitted to us have a 2.9, uh, sorry, 3.0 to a 3.8 GPA, 20 to a 25 on the ACT or a 1000 to 1200 on the SAT. So if you're below any of those ranges, definitely send any material that will help support your application. 
like I said, I started off with admissions counselors. I was the one to review your application. I and mean, honestly, yes, the first thing we look at is your test scores and your GPA. But after that, we moved to your live resume. And then we moved to your letter recommendations, personal statements, resume. Everything you provide for us, we'll take into account before making a decision. We will review each application individually, okay? That's something I did want to mention. Thank you, Alex. Um, and at this point, we there are no questions in the chat. So um, again, thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your day. See you, everybody. All right, so just some closing statements. Um, Thank you everyone for joining us. When you close this window, you will there'll be a link for a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions at college to career fairs connect.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as all of the other session recordings at college to career fairs connect.org. Thank you.